Alrighty, let's do this. Emotionally unavailable men. This is a subject that's come up oh, quite a bit um, in some of the coaching sessions that I have done with uh, some queens. And one of the things I always reflect back to them is notice where you are and notice how much comes up when we dig a little bit and poke at your paradigm. Uh, the idea that uh, men are emotionally unavailable, therefore the assumption is, is that you are, is actually a lot of bullshit. Um, it's the, the, the conversation of two sides of the same coin. Right? Just because men don't mm -hmm. communicate like you think they should, based on how you were nurtured, does not make them emotionally unavailable. What it may make them is a, a challenging match for yourself, given that you wanna talk about everything um, and talk it out from righteousness. Let's talk, but I'm right. And I want to share with something, and I hope you guys hear this, that I'm not like pounding down on women or anything of that nature, but there's just a lot of talk about toxic masculine, toxic masculine, men are X, Y, and Z, men are dogs, men are this. And I want to help you see how you're alienating an entire group of people without really looking in the mirror. Um, I have yet to meet, any, meet, meet anybody, self-included, who does not come with a whole bunch of baggage. And so... Um, and all that baggage uh, gets reflected in shame and, and guilt and little subtle ways to throw jabs at another human, uh, believing that you're better than them or superior in some way. And that is the thing that I want to address. You are not superior. Um, you may be better practiced in expressing your emotions. Um, there's been a study, they did a study with, I think it was like, 13 and 14 year old little boys and girls and when a little boy uh, fell during a sporting event um, often all the boys would surround him check on him and then they'd say all right substitute send somebody else in because the game must go on and uh, conversely when a little girl got hurt all those little girls surrounded that girl the game stopped and everything became about her and her hurt and her wounds now uh, as an outsider we can look at that and say oh the little girls are better um, and uh, I don't know if that's true. I'd say that it's a, a way to handle a situation. Um, both can create um, issues. One, um, a little boy feeling surrounded by his friends and then wanting to take care of him and then them saying, all right, bro, sit off to the side. Well, if somebody gets the, 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 the principal or whoever to take care of you may create emotional resilience. And so what comes up a lot in these coaching sessions that I do with men is they'll say, bro, it's like anything I do tips her off and then we're back to me being in trouble, right? And they have this whole mm, thing about getting in trouble um, with their partner. And... How do I say this? It's beautiful that we called each other in. Uh, relationships, in my opinion, are the most challenging thing on the planet if you, if you choose to do it consciously. Right? If you keep putting down the sword of righteousness and looking and reflecting and looking back at yourself, um, most challenging thing ever. If you are just blaming and shaming and pointing everything over there at these toxic men and these narcissistic men and these, you know, we have a lot of labels for men right now. Um, and uh, as one, um, I want to remind you that uh, if you dig deep enough, you will find a lot of um, interesting ego tricks to try to keep the personality safe. The inner critic will, will literally point over there without looking at itself and noticing all the places where uh, you caused, allowed, or perpetuated the very issue that you're pointing at another for. The martyrdom, the, uh, you know, woe is me victimhood, the um, blaming and shaming uh, your partner because 
they honestly told you the truth. You said, hey, do you find her attractor, attractive? And they said, yes. And now six, seven years later, you're still punishing that person for that truthfulness. And so men feel exact opposite. You ask, hey, do I look pretty in this dress? They're gonna answer the only way that keeps them safe. And so we have to look at the safety mechanism. Why does a man not feel safe around a woman? And why does a woman not feel safe around a man? And I am in no way uh, excusing actual abuse. Let me say this crystal clear. I'm in no way excusing actual abuse, emotionally or physically. And it's a very thin line when it comes to emotional abuse. Um, if somebody has to walk on pins and needles, that could be considered emotional abuse. And then if the person who's walking on pins and needles daily finally explodes and yells or says something, that person could be deemed emotionally abusive without looking at the entire thing. In sporting events, oftentimes the referee only catches the retaliation and not the initial thing. And so very nuanced. I am not an expert. I am just sharing my truth here. Um, and my truth is subject to change. Uh, ladies, you are amazing, you are beautiful, you are queens, you are powerhouses, you are all those things, and I invite you to stop um, labeling uh, your, your ex-husband or everybody else a narcissist or emotionally unavailable unless you actually have uh, a degree, or not a degree, a certification or some type of <laughs> uh, like actual proof that that person is that. Because it, oftentimes it's, it's a lot trickier. And um, yeah, this may make some of you hate me. And I, I just request that you, uh, <laughs> you be as nice as possible in the comments. I swear to God, I'm, I'm here for all of us. And, and I think I'm a voice for the voiceless in, in that sense. Um, yeah deeply appreciate each and every one of you. Please drop a comment below if this resonated or if it didn't and you want to tell me how I'm absolutely wrong. Just all I ask is you do it respectfully. Blessings and blessings.